All right, hello YouTube. So uh, in this video, I want to demonstrate um, a programming technique uh, that uh, everyone should learn to use when they're uh, working with an Arduino. It's quite a common technique. There's nothing special here, but uh, it's something that beginners should uh, learn to move on to. You know, once you've familiarized yourself with the programming, and you can achieve a certain degree of, uh, you know, competence with uh, with with the chip, uh, you should move on to trying to understand something like this. So what I have here is a Arduino Nano, and this is actually part of a, a radio I'm building, a radio communication device. So if you look over here, you'll see there's a, this is an NRF24 L01 radio, and it's connected to the Arduino. Now the NRF radio doesn't have any light indicators on it, so there's no way to tell if, you know, you're receiving a signal or the you've got a radio acknowledgement from the other radio. Uh, so I decided to add a couple of LEDs into the circuit, um, which would, uh, you know, allow me to visually just inspect the the unit and then know whether transmission and reception is going on properly. So I built this circuit for that. Uh, you don't have to pay attention to anything else uh, in this particular uh, uh, tutorial. I just want you to concentrate on these two LEDs. So we have a red LED and a green LED. Uh, they're connected to digital pins 6 and 7 on the Arduino Nano and you can see that each has got uh, down here a current limiting resistor 220 ohms and uh, the red LED is flashing so this is what I wanted to uh, tell you about today so uh, before I uh, get into the nitty gritty of it can I just show you a demonstration of what exactly I want to be able to achieve with these LEDs so let me upload the sketch okay so what's happening here is uh, right so you can see both the LEDs are flashing all right and they're doing so at different rates you I hope you can see that the green one is flashing slowly and the red one is flashing uh, a little faster and uh, in today's video I'm going to show you how to achieve this so let's look at the standard LED uh, blink sketch first alright so this is what a blink sketch looks like let me upload it to the Arduino now okay so right now I'm just doing the red LED and you can see that that's uh, if you look at the sketch it's connected to digital pin 7 right uh, we set the pin mode to output and then alternatively we give the pin a high and then we delay for some time and then we give the pin a low and then we delay for some time and that's causing the LED to flash like this so uh, that's that's pretty straightforward this is a very very uh, basic sketch on the Arduino but what I want you to think about is now supposing I wanted to flash the green LED also but I wanted to do so at a different rate completely different from the red LED you can see now obviously this sketch will suddenly become a lot more complicated than this because you'll have to um, keep track of the green LED when did it flash on and then when it flash off and what's gonna cause you the most problem is this function here the delay function um, so this this whole video is all about how to, how, how to get rid of this delay function and achieve you know uh, the, to realize the functionality of flashing LEDs independently at whatever rate you want without using the delay function so that's what this video is all about because what happens here with this delay function is uh, when it starts a counter internally and it keeps going for 2000 milliseconds and while this delay function is running your microcontroller is blocked it's not allowed to do anything else so if you if you wanted to start another counter inside you know for the other LED or you wanted to probe a sensor during this 2000 milliseconds which you can see here while the LED is on if you wanted to probe a sensor or if you wanted to make a radio transmission in this time during this period you wouldn't be able to do that because this delay function just blocks the microprocessor and sends it into a, a loop uh, uh, until two, you know 2000 milliseconds are over so while it's okay when you're a beginner to start off with the delay function pretty quickly when you start you know wanting to do more complex stuff with the Arduino and talking to sensors and um, you don't want to be constrained by this limitation of your 
microcontroller not being available for this two, 2000 milliseconds here and uh, you know 1500 milliseconds here I mean it could be just as little as 200 milliseconds if you wanted to flash a little faster I say I just change this to 150 now and uh, well, you might think to yourself oh well the LED is flashing faster now like it's like it's doing right now but again even in this 200 milliseconds which is a lot of time for a microcontroller you can't do anything else with this microcontroller you can't probe a sensor you can't put uh, you know you can't send a high or low signal to some other pin you can't uh, you can't send a radio transmission you can't do a lot of things so this is actually a pretty inefficient way to get LEDs to blink even though we all start out this way so in this video I'm going to show you how to achieve this LED bl uh, blinking uh, without using the delay signal at all and uh, this technique can be applied to uh, to more or less uh, any kind of application where you want to achieve a repetitive cycle of things like this blinking but you don't want to use the delay function um, to achieve it so let's move in to my new sketch and just to remind you I will uh, upload the sketch now and you can just see what it does okay so here we have the I've uploaded the sketch you see the red LED flashing at a different rate you see the green LED flashing at a different rate and they're doing so independently and in between this flashing I can tell the microcontroller to do whatever I want so that's exactly what um, what's going on here and um, I will now walk you through the code and how I achieve this okay so the first thing to keep in mind is you can see the this is the Arduino sketch here and uh, it consists of two files so one is the main file the, the sketch file and the other is this H file which is my uh, header file in which I have actually the actual code is actually in here which achieves this now why I did it this way is I wanted two LEDs so I wanted a green LED on pin 8 and I wanted a red LED on pin 7 um, so you know I wanted the green LED to show me whenever a transmission on the radio went through correctly and I wanted a red LED to show me whenever the transmission failed so that's why I have two LEDs and as you can see the the code here in this main file is extremely clean you know it's just one call to a flash function for each LED and uh, then in the loop function you just see this update function here for each LED also and that's all there is that's actually achieving it but behind the scenes the file that's running is this one um, and so this is the header file and I've created this class here called flashing LED the reason I've done it with classes and uh, if you don't understand C++ classes I recommend you stop the video um, learn about C++ classes uh, things like um, you know uh, private public methods functions and uh, variables and uh, the constructors of classes and things like that because uh, object-oriented programming is very powerful and it would be extremely difficult to achieve this sort of flashing so let me just show you that again uh, it would be extremely difficult to achieve this kind of uh, flashing if you didn't use classes and the beauty of classes is now that I've done it using object-oriented programming I could easily add two three four five six ten more LEDs and achieve this with really really simple code um, whereas if I try to just even just do two LEDs without classes the code would be extremely complicated and uh, it'd be very very difficult to implement more than two LEDs so that's why I'm using classes and I recommend you learn classes if you don't know what they are uh, before going uh, you know into into this video a little deeper all right so let's assume you know what classes are how to how to instantiate a class how to uh, construct a class and how to use classes you understand what public and private methods are okay so here we are so I'm gonna create a class called the flashing LED right so this is the class definition from here to here I'm giving it some public variables so which pin is the LED connected to how many times do I want it to flash all right how much is the delay I want between flashes on that particular LED and this is just a boolean flag that tells me whether the LED is currently on or off alright and this is a counter this unsigned long 
st on off this variable is just a counter i'll come to that in a little while all right we have three public methods so the first is obviously the constructor and uh, to construct the led to create an instance of this led class you only need to know which pin the led is connected to um, if you want to flash the led you do so uh, by calling the flash function and giving it two arguments so the first argument is nfl which if you look up here nfl is the number of times to flash the second argument is the fl delay and uh, fl delay means how fast do you want it to flash in milliseconds so if you put an fl delay of 500 it would be on for 500 milliseconds and then off for 500 milliseconds right and then finally there's this function uh, which is the update function so if you look into the main file you'll see here that inside this loop function i'm calling each LED's update function and so this is what updates the status of the LED and uh, the class and the logic that controls whether the LED should be turned on or off so this is a very important function and it has to be called at least once in every loop cycle or as often as possible so what that means is you should not do this put another delay in here somehow for some other purpose and what this means is that this delay will now uh, you know block the processor for 800 milliseconds so if you did something like this this program would not work properly so basically just get rid of that delay function okay let's come back to the class definition all right so this is the constructor of the class fairly simple just uh, instantiate the class all right designate the pin and put that pin into output mode simple enough right now is the member function which is uh, actually to flash the led so if you want to flash the led you can see the code here you just say um, red dot flash with two arguments or green dot flash with two arguments and the leds are created up here okay maybe i'll tell you this first so you want to create an led flashing led you do so like this give it a name and uh, the argument is which pin is that led attached to similarly for the red one if you want to flash an LED, you can put a flash, you can just say red dot flash, and then you have two arguments. The first one is how many times do you want it to flash, and the second is what is the interval between flashes, the time interval in milliseconds. So this is the flash um, function. You call it with two arguments, how many flashes, and what's the delay between flashes, all right? Um, let's deal with this part of the function first this is the easiest all right so first we want to set the um, the the variables of the of the class themselves so depending on the arguments that were given we set the number of flashes I'm doubling that so whatever if you uh, you know put the number of flashes as 10 internally the this value would become 20 and so that'll become clear a little later on why I'm doing that Okay, so we set the flash delay and then we set this is on flag boolean flag is to true so um, the moment you call this flash function the led will come on with this with this flag okay and the last thing is we start this timer or clock or counter whatever you want to call it uh, called st on off and if you look up here this is it this is the um, it's an unsigned long uh, variable and uh, it has the name st on off which means basically it's it's a millisecond value which tells you using the millis function it tells you at what time did this flash uh, signal start that's that's basically it all right in milliseconds at what time did this flash signal start okay so now that we've told the led to flash here and we've set all the variables internally inside the loop function we have to keep calling the update all right and you'll get used to this the more you use this kind of technique for programming you'll find a lot of your classes will keep calling the update function inside the loop uh, the, the loop function um, in order you, and you have to keep doing this because the LED individually has to keep checking is it time for me to come on or is it time for me to go off and that's that's the, that's the purpose of calling this function repeatedly inside the loop all right, so let's see what this update function does. Okay, so the first thing is this part, all right? So if the number of flashes is more than zero, 
right? Obviously, we need to either flash it on or off, and we do that this way. So, if that is on flag, which was set to true here, if that is true, turn the LED on with a high, and if it's false, turn the LED off with a low. Right? So, this part should be fairly clear. Do we really need to do anything to the LED? Are there any pending flashes? And that's decided by this variable. And if we do need to do anything, do we need to turn the LED on or off? So that's that's pretty clear from this. All right. Now this is the heart of the function. This these four or five lines. Um, so you need to try and understand what exactly is going on here. So remember up here we set a timer as soon as the flash command was given okay and so that's a millisecond value and it's contained in this timer here st on off right now what we do is every time we call the update function we take another we call the millis function again and we have another millis value now and this is the time now right and so what we do next is we check whether the time now minus the old time is that greater than the delay that was asked by the operator or not? So that's so. If the time now is say 600 milliseconds, and we started this at 500 milliseconds, and the delay was asked was 200 milliseconds, so obviously that delay has not yet been accomplished. So the this part is not executed, and the code will go off. And next time we come back to the update function again, this this will be updated. The t now, and so it'll keep on every time you call update. This t now will keep updating until this condition is met. So in other words, we have delayed whatever state we wrote to the LED, we have delayed it until the required, um, the delay was you know, completed in terms of milliseconds. And then we enter this little if function, if loop. And so the first thing we do is, if the LED was on, we turn it off. If the LED was off, we turn it on. So we just flip this Boolean value. Uh, whether depending on whether the LED should be on or off, all right? So it's basically this this time interval has passed, so we just flip the state of the LED, all right? The second thing we do is we decrement the number of flashes, okay? So you reduce it by one. Um, and why I'm so you can see every time it flashes, whether it goes on to off or off to on, the number of flashes reduces by one. And that's what I'm doing here. And so that's why up here I've in multiplied it by two. Because if you if you decrement every on and off and you want uh, 20 cycles, you need to dec you know you need to multiply it by two 40 times. Uh, because you you're decrementing for each on and off, rather, you know, for an on as well as an off signal. Um, rather than for a full on-off cycle. So it's just, just a little clever little trick that uh, makes the code a little simpler. Alright. And then what you do is, so you flip the LED state, you decrement the number of flashes that are left to to con to to uh, you know to flash on or off, and then what you do is you reset that timer. So I'm doing that right here. So you see the timer has now been reset to this very instant in time when we achieve this. So the next time the update function is called, it's got a new timer value. ST on off now has a new value, and then again when we check time now obviously the first time we check time now the condition will not be met and so there'll be the delay which we wanted to achieve will be achieved by this every time you reset the, the counter so that's what um, this code does uh, and uh, you don't really need to understand this to use it I mean there's uh, it would be it's it's good if you understand what C++ classes are and how to program them but actually this entire file here this flash led.h is just an abstraction you can just abstract this whole thing away and uh, as long as you just include it in your code like this and you know how to use the file so you how to use the file you create an led every time you need to flash it you call the flash function for that led um, how many flashes you want and what's the delay you want and uh, then you just call the update function in the loop so you just keep calling it over and over again so you don't really need to understand this code uh, in order to use it. And that's, that's the beauty of object-oriented programming.
this entire file just gets abstracted away and um, all you need to do is just these three lines create uh, command a flash and uh, just make sure you keep calling update <coughs> so let me just load this file up again into the Arduino and you can see it working so there you go LED is flashing independently um, with a different uh, time time interval for each LED and uh, you can uh, add on as many LEDs as you want to achieve this effect and your code will not get any more complicated than what you're seeing right here because everything is abstracted away into the class uh, definition and the header file all right so I hope uh, this technique was uh, you could understand this little technique that I've showed you and uh, it's important for all you know if you're an Arduino beginner to to learn to move into something like this because the delay function it's okay to start with it but it, it really gets pretty annoying once you want to work with uh, sensors and other uh, you know radios and things like that where you can't exactly predict when something is going to happen from the external environment and uh, you don't want your Arduino to be blocked when something is happening you, you want to be able to deal with that uh, in your you know in your programming code so uh, that's that's the reason why I, I made this quick video uh, to um, explain how to get rid of the how to achieve uh, repetitive events without using the delay function so I hope uh, things were clear do leave questions uh, if you have any or comments in the comment section I'll try to answer them I will leave a link to this code uh, including the flash LED uh, header file so feel free to download and use it um, uh, as you feel uh, as you feel you need to uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great day.